So that has given us uh, a real uh, panorama, a real terrain of economic, social, political transformation, structural change. So I'd like now to, without further ado, to um, open up the floor for uh, questions. And uh, I'd ask you, as you make your question, to please identify yourself, to please use the mic, and please speak clearly and uh, fairly loudly. Thank you. So I shall uh, start on this side of the room uh, with the lady in front, please. Okay, thank you. Uh, Marek Verpoort, University of uh, Antwerp. I was wondering whether the... Can you speak? I mean, I, okay. at my age, I, I have okay. the excuse of being somewhat deaf, and, and uh, I really should have a hearing aid, so please speak up. Uh, okay, okay, thank sure. You, Tell yeah. me if it's not loud enough, okay? Marek Verpoort, University of Antwerp, uh, Belgium. I was wondering whether the finding that uh, consumption growth is higher when initial poverty is higher, so the finding that you see in Africa, is due to the fact that Africa is the continent where people rely most on rain-fed agriculture, and so it's actually due to some rainfall shocks maybe in the base here, and then you see like a mean reverting um, process going on. So that's the first question. Secondly, I think the finding uh, for Rwanda in the period 2001, 2005, has more to do with uh, post-war catch-up because the social protection programs only kicked off uh, after 2005. And actually between 2001 and 2005, poverty reduction was really low. And those areas or districts which were really poor in 2001, they were poor because of the legacy of the violent conflicts. Okay, thank you. So uh, just remaining on this side of the, uh, of the uh, room for the moment, the gentleman... Uh, in the grey shirt there, please. Uh, Alan Thomas from the IMF. Uh, question asking about your data sources for your labor data. Uh, Louise Fox and myself have just written a paper uh, uh, looking at uh, 30 countries having a consistent methodology for establishing uh, the definition of employment, looking at it sectorally. Um, because we've been a bit concerned about the quality of the ILO data, notwithstanding your <laughs> previous association. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we, we do find, you know, like you, though, uh, quite a big change in, in the sectoral distribution of employment. Um, as well, uh, the paper uh, is also uh, sort of realistic in the sense of going forward. So we relate the employment then, sectoral employment to sectoral output development using IMF data. Um, and so the, the glass half full that you mentioned earlier, I think we poured a little water out of that, given uh, our conclusion that there's not much happening in manufacturing employment in the next 10 years, uh, even though they have very strong growth rates. So, um. Okay, well, at least Africa has more of a glass these days. Okay, could we take uh, Morton Yevon on the right there, please? Thank you. Uh, if, uh, sorry, and uh, could you identify yourself for the, I will. For the audience? Yeah. Uh, my name is Morten Jervin, Simon Fraser University. Uh, thank you, Eric, for a very uh, bold uh, framework for us to, to think about. I, I'm a bit surprised that you do not address uh, uh, the problem of data availability and uh, the quality of some of the evidence for some of these claims. Uh, for instance, when we talk about inclusive growth, uh, and you, uh, you, for instance, quote Salai Martin's paper, which is based on the correlations with, well, actually driven by changes in the national accounts data, whereas the inequality data and therefore the poverty lines are derived from a very, uh, 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 a very small sample indeed. For instance, Angola is not in that sample. We don't have data in that particular sample for Nigeria since 1996. So to then draw trends from 1996, 2000, when we don't have data on these countries and others, which Andy and McKay and others have pointed out. Uh, but that's, that's one thing. Also, the other thing, uh, which is more like an invitation, uh, an observation about paradisation. Uh, at, at the beginning, you said there has been 3% growth per annum, 2000 to 2010. That might well well be. But you also said that there has been 0% uh, growth, 1960 to 2000. 
That is true on average across those regions, but you could also say there was uh, about 2 to 3% from 1960 to 1980, then negative or zero, 1980 to 2000. The, what I'm driving out, that this is a question of periodization, and if we are interested in the underlying institutional anatomy of growth, uh, distributional effects, issues of land rights, uh, um, structural transformation, could we not maybe then learn something from the previous period of growth, because Africa has had growth before, that is 1960 to 1980, or even uh, in the case of colonial Ghana uh, from the 1890s. Yeah, okay. Thank you. History. So, Morten, I'd like... Um I'm moving steadily across the room, and if, hopefully if I can come back, I will do. I'd like to go to straight, though, to Martin Revalian. Martin, if we could have the microphone to Martin, please. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you, Eric. Um, I, I think I'm a bit worried about... Um, in, in, in the AER paper, I, I, had a, I tested for regional effects. All right? And so... S speak as loudly as you can. Thank you. <laughs> I, it's just, it, no, I, the, my apologies. In the AER paper, I'm going to buy you some hearing aid. Um, <laughs> in the AER paper, I, I tested for regional effects and, and reported the results, and, and there, were no, there was no sign of it. But they're regional effects in the intercept. Um, I, I never tested for regional effects in the, in the, in the slope coefficients. <laughs> Um, and I guess my, my, my feeling is that it would be very hard to identify those effects. I mean, essentially what you're doing in, in taking just Africa in that, in that model, you're essentially truncating the sample in a way that's heavily skewed towards low-income countries with high poverty rates. And unfortunately, that's the initial conditions we're looking at in sub-Saharan Africa. So I'd be kind of skeptical. You could, you could identify the relationship, that's better, identify the relationship in, in, in one region, and, and it's such an unusual region relative to the rest of the developing world. That said, my hunch would be, echoing the, the uh, previous comment, that what you're actually picking up with the, the headcount index there is, is, is neoclassical convergence. The point, the point I was making in the, in the AR paper is that there are two effects working in opposite directions. There's a neoclassical convergence effect completely understood from the, the growth empirics literature that countries with a higher, lower initial mean will tend to have a higher growth rate. And there's a distributional effect. The poverty effect is a, is a, a, a relative distributional effect because you're controlling for the initial mean to, 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 to factor out the neoclassical convergence part. So unless you control for the initial mean the right way, you, there's a real risk that the poverty measure will start to confound the two things. It's like it's got a distributional aspect and it's got a neoclassical convergence aspect. So the issue then would be, have you adequately controlled for the neoclassical convergence effect in order to identify the pure distributional effect? Right? The point is that the poverty measure is there as a purely distributional effect. Um, I think that the, there's... The, yeah, there are a couple of other minor points, but we can talk about them later. Can I? Okay. Can I? Because I'm in need for <laughs> Yeah, no, that's, okay. that's fine. Yes, let's uh, have uh, some responses now from uh, Eric, and then we'll take some further questions. I can see Sam <coughs> wanted to come in with a question. Eric, please. Yeah. Um, the, the, the first question uh, uh, from, from Marek, uh, uh, it, 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 to, to the extent that I understood uh, your, your, your points, um, I, I think it's, it's very clear that while uh, agriculture was more than exploited uh, until fairly recently, uh, it was the, uh, the cash cow of the, of the politician. I mean, this was really, a, a, uh, uh, instead of, of uh, trying to extract a surplus and investing this surplus in uh, social overhead capital, it ended up in Swiss banks or uh, wherever uh, these people uh, could, could put uh, uh, money. That has changed. I, I think that, that uh, and this is again good news, I think uh, much more uh, needs to, uh, to be done to uh, nurture uh, agriculture uh, in countries at a very early stage of development. It's the only possible uh, 
engine of, uh, of growth uh, at, at, a, at a very early stage of, uh, uh, of development. And of course, once they start growing, and uh, the uh, evidence is that uh, productivity has gone up. And incidentally, I looked at uh, uh, agricultural productivity, and uh, uh, there's a good if we study on this in Africa, and uh, there has been no acceleration of agricultural productivity in the last uh, 10 years in, in Africa, which is somewhat disappointing. And again, this calls for supranational uh, research institutes and, uh, and what have you. So uh, that's on, on uh, Mareika. Um, on the, uh, the, the gentleman who asked the question about labor data, that's a very good question. And what I should have said uh, is that uh, uh, after we looked at the data set that the World Bank had been used for uh, the World uh, Development Report, uh, we found that, first of all, that data set was no longer available, but secondly, it had not been updated. Okay. So we had a problem, and the problem was the following. The, the World Bank data were based on the share of agriculture in the labor force. The only time data that we could get from 2000 on was the share of agriculture in total employment. Now, I, uh, um, I, I, I confess uh, I didn't have the time to look exactly at the difference that it makes in terms of uh, uh, definition, but it, it, it's, it's absolutely clear that uh, the, the area of uh, data qual quality, data improvement, uh, uh, continuity in data sets is absolutely crucial. And, and again, I, if there's something that wider might be able to make a contribution is, in, is in, in working on the, uh, the quality and the continuity of, uh, of data. Uh, question by, by uh, Morton. Um, the, the, I mean, we all know, uh, and of course you've been pushing that idea since you published your book, that uh, national income accounts in Africa uh, are uh, subject to enormous uh, uh, measurement errors. Uh, and this is one of the reasons, incidentally, why the, uh, uh, the, the people like Solai Martin, uh, who see the uh, glass as half full, uh, and people like Elvin Young to some extent, uh, because they rely, well certainly Solai Martin relies on uh, national income consumption data, uh, and, and he shows a much rosier picture. But when it comes to inequality and poverty, um, I think I would, uh, m my own position would be uh, uh, quite different. I would say that the quality of many household surveys, the quality of many of the demographic and health uh, surveys, uh, on average, is quite good. And, and uh, poverty estimates do not come from national income accounts. They come from surveys data. The data. Uh, inequality figures come from survey data. So I think we, we, we have to be careful here that uh, we don't generalize from saying that uh, because national income accounts are not very good, uh, nothing else can be relied on in terms of <clears throat> poverty estimate or uh, uh, inequality estimate. But even then, uh, I, I would fully agree that uh, quality can still be uh, uh, improved. Um, <clears throat> then, um, the, uh, I think you had a question about uh, can we learn something from the uh, pre-2000 uh, periods. And uh, here I would, I would refer you to the, the book by uh, Nodulu et, uh, et al., which was one of the more successful collaborative projects of the African Econ Economic Research Consortium. It, it was a, a, a book that had something like 20 contributors um, with, uh, I don't know how many country uh, studies, but uh, uh, maybe 15, 20 country studies. 
Um, and it does go into a, uh, a rather deep analysis of the, uh, the causes of uh, uh, very low uh, growth in the context of this, uh, of this whole period. Uh, Martin, um, I, I must say I was very surprised because, you know, I wanted your, I needed my hypothesis to uh, build a case for uh, pro-growth poverty reduction. Because if I could say Martin, the world expert on uh, poverty analysis, finds that uh, uh, high initial poverty retards uh, growth, then of course it uh, enhances or it, it uh, bolsters the argument for working directly on schemes that will reduce poverty. So when I found that uh, within the context of uh, Sub-Saharan Africa, uh, this uh, relationship did not uh, hold, uh, it, it became a paradox to me. And, and again, I, I, I'm trying to resolve it, and I think much more work uh, needs to be done to, uh, to understand uh, what it is. But, but I think it has something to do with the, uh, uh, the, the fact that over time, some of the, uh, the countries that, that had uh, high initial poverty suddenly had much better governance. So uh, uh, boom, uh, they, they grew faster, and vice versa. That, that countries like Cote d'Ivoire, that had been high uh, growth countries after conflicts, so they had low poverty, suddenly grew less. Okay, thank you very much, um, Eric. Now, um, we've actually run ourselves uh, into the, uh, the coffee break, unfortunately. So uh, I think I'm going to have to ask um, Sam and um, any others who uh, would like to uh, ask um, and discuss with Eric further questions over the, over the coffee break. But what I would like to say that, um, is, is that Eric has given us a marvelous uh, keynote on the second day of the, uh, the conference. Uh, he began by pointing out that uh, as one moves through the... Uh, one's career in development, um, creativity and experience uh, blend together. I can certainly say there was an immense amount of creativity on display, indeed an, an immense amount of inspiration, Eric, particularly for the um, early career researchers who are just starting down uh, this road. As a last, uh, last point, I'd like to uh, say that there's a, a multi-volume, multi-special issue study by Eric and Magico Nasanka, who is in the audience today, on uh, globalization and poverty. Uh, many of the papers are on the website as well in our working paper series. And I, I would urge you to, uh, to take a look at that, because it's pretty much the definitive uh, statement on this, on this issue. Okay, so without further ado, I'd like to thank you, Eric, and uh, convene the uh, closer session. Thank you very much. <laughs>